going on tonight? Why are you dressed like that? Because the star of the Boogie Nights on the show. Cool. What about you? Because the star of the new from Hunky Dory's on the show. Fab. Why are you dressed like that? I always dress like this. Groovy. Let's start the show. Oscar-nominated film star Mark Wahlberg is here. I know, I know. Oscar-nominated actress Minnie Driver is here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Comedian Mark Watson is on the show. Plus, we've got music from the wonderful Christina Perry. Yes, yes. Now, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg's going to be uh, telling us about his new film, Contraband. Now, uh, it's a thriller, all set in the world of international uh, drug smuggling. Now, over the years, smugglers have come up with ingenious ways to conceal things. Now, you might think this is a perfectly ordinary swan. <gasps> but as soon as the police have gone, she's off! <laughs> Actually, that is a model. It's a model uh, from London Fashion Week. Yeah. So you're laughing now, but come the spring, we'll all be wearing birds on our heads. We will. <laughs> hey, this is my favourite smuggling story ever, though. A Mexican man, right, to try and smuggle himself across the border into America, disguised himself as a seat on the bus. <laughs> Once they caught him, of course. I mean, you've got to be a sort of person. You have to sit there. He couldn't move. So people just took pictures and poked fun at him and laughed at him. Still, he, he was lucky he got caught because look who's waiting at the bus stop. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! Later, we'll have music from the gorgeous Christina Perry. But first, what's on telly tonight? Yes, he is. It's Mark Watson! Woo! Lovely to see you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Last new seat belts, it's Mini Driver! Woo! Gorgeous. Lovely to see you. Have a seat. Yes. And uh, fighter, actor, producer, and now guest, it's Mark Wahlberg! Mark, Mini, Mini, Mark, Mark, Mini, Mini, Mark, 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 Mark. <laughs> they've met, they've bonded. And uh, Mark Wahlberg, welcome to the show. First time having you. And welcome yes. to London, indeed. Thank you yes, for very good. Thank you. Yes. Um, are you okay? Did, is it, you've just come from Australia? Yes, I'm very jet lagged. Are you really in a bit. and hungover? Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's a double whammy. That's good, though, isn't it? So if I make no sense whatsoever, please forgive me. Don't worry, you'll fit right in. Uh, <laughs> and uh, did you have fun in Australia, or was it all work? It was all work. We actually, uh, we flew down, I uh, was there for one day, and then we flew right uh, from Australia to Dubai and Dubai to here. Oh, my God. Yeah. They treat you like an animal. It'd be worse. I've been to prison, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So, Enough for you. Yes, only for a short time. Don't be nervous. <laughs> Long ago. <laughs> Minnie's all excited now. She's like, have you? Do uh, you like prison? <laughs> no, but I would love a prison break. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like your kids are a bit of a chip off the old block, because didn't your kid injure you? It, was it karate he did on you? Uh, karate, boxing, whatever, whatever they can do. Whatever they're choosing at the time. So are they trying to hurt you? It's not accidental? Oh, no, very much so. <laughs> very much so. Because how old are they? Uh, f five and three. And it's like, Dad, come on, let me kick you in the nuts. Come on. <laughs> no, it hurts. <laughs> and they, they love to box. They love to fight. But even my three-year-old, who's probably the toughest one, he's terrified of his little sister. Oh, really? She's a biter. Oh. <laughs> and you probably hit her back. She puts the bite and the pinch on. <laughs> Are you, are you a new dad, Mark Watson? Uh, my kid is two today. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, <laughs> you, um, you say ah. Some people would actually be there at the party, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag terrible father. <laughs> he, he, um, yeah. Ah, oh, it was not quite the noise my wife made when I mentioned that I'd been working. <laughs> but it, luckily, he's obviously he's, he's too small. It's, the, the big action is over by now. I can just Your sit by his bed and never let you live that down. Well, no, I mean, I... She's I've... gonna say it's okay. You better, you better do Put some serious in. shopping. <laughs> Yeah, yeah listen to this, Mark. I'm going to have to throw money at the problem, yeah. But, I, you know, it's, it'll be some consolation. When he grows up as a sort of damaged teenager yeah. and he's doing, he's smashing in shop windows and stuff, he'll say, you were never there. And I'll say, yeah, but, like, it's BBC One. <laughs> uh, it's, it's I'm gone with Wahlberg and Driver. What am I going to do? Go to your party with the balloons? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to have priorities. He done, it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> I saw him this afternoon. It was fine. I think he recognised me. Briefly. <laughs> How old is your son Henry, Minnie? He's three. D but doesn't he give you advice? Yes. Why? This well, he... I can't... <laughs> no, I'm a it, it, opens up, it does I'm open a, a window parent. into your world. <laughs> I'm always trying to put together his toys without... Even the English is in Japanese, you know, with the instructions with toys. So I'm, I was trying to put something together the other day, and it was... I'd take it up in there an hour, and I was like, Henry, it's just not... It's not happening. I'm very frustrated, and I can't make this toy, and I'm really sorry. And he went... It's okay, mommy. Do you need a drink? <laughs> it's so, so horrible. I'm trying to think of all the times that you must have heard me go, oh my god, I just can't do this, I gotta get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you coming back to Britain? Would you like Henry to grow up here? Yeah. I would, actually. I mean, I'd love him to have part of his education here because it's I had such a wicked time at school here I loved it but I guess it's the work though is there enough work here and all that sort of stuff yeah and it's also you know my nice house in Hollywood would buy me a one-bedroom flat round where my friend you know where my sister lives I mean it's I might have been priced out of London until, really? uh, yeah it's scary expensive. you could live in the north <laughs> <laughs> you mean like Birmingham <laughs> <laughs> it goes further north than that <laughs> Yes. Not. No, it does. I've been on tour. There's a place called Edinburgh. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Because the, the weird thing about you going to Hollywood, I always assumed that uh, Minnie, that you went like the sort of work brought you to Hollywood, but you just went to Hollywood. Well, I went because my friend. I was living in New York where I didn't know anyone, and then the one girl I knew, she found out her boyfriend was having relationships with about seven other women, and she was like, "I've got to leave here. I'm going to LA to be a screenwriter." And I was like, well, I'm not ready to go back to London. I was 23, 24. So I was like, oh, I'll come. So we just got an apartment together in LA. And was it kind of the tip, was it kind of like crazy young kids living in Hollywood? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. Because are you a fan of Entourage? I love Entourage. Because I think we all love entourage. entourage. It's fantastic, but... It scares me a bit. So how come you never appeared when we asked you? You never asked me. That's a lie. You never asked uh -oh. me. That's a f lie. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's nice kidding. Thing. See? Oh, he is kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we never asked you. I knew. <laughs> I knew we would have if we knew she liked the show. I loved it. I knew him. I knew him. I was he was in Grace Point Plank. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, was that kind of the start of your producing career? Uh, yeah, I had produced um, one other film, but um, that was basically the thing that kicked it off for television. And it is obviously based on you arriving in in Hollywood, and you had loosely based. But you did have an entourage. I still have an entourage. Do you really? Because I wonder about that. Of course. Because how do you get rid of an entourage? Presumably they You shake them for a while, but then they always end up coming back. <laughs> I remember when I bought the... I've only owned one house my entire life, and when I bought the house, I was planning on starting a family. I had already met my now wife and the mother of my children. But as we're walking through the house, I'm with my friends. They're all running around picking their rooms. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I had to break it to them that they weren't going to be moving in. <laughs> And they were really upset. I mean, you really find out who your friends are. They're like, come on, you're not going to have... You're going to get married, you're going to have kids? What the f*** are you doing? <laughs> this will ruin our lives. I, exactly. <laughs> so I did, I did, uh, I took one room and I designated it, I called it the barracks, and I put triple bunk beds in there. And I said, if you guys ever want to stay over, you can stay in the barracks. You're way too nice. I know. But you know what, I do, I do like having people, you know, if I'm working and I'm, if somebody's going to be doing the job, I might as well have somebody that I know and that I can trust. I guess. So. <laughs> but did they visit you on set and things? Was it the perfect storm they came on set? Yeah, oh my God. I, we were on the boat and the, uh, Wolfgang Peterson like, 
What is the smell? I smell something wrong here. But they're smoking pot in the engine room. <laughs> Like, what are you guys doing? You're gonna get me fired. <laughs> like, in the engine room on this, like, real, you know, fishing boat, laying on machinery and stuff, and... God, so the program did kind of resonate with you, that you were kind of, you mixed with that kind of, the young star set. They, I wasn't hanging out with that many starry people. We, our house was just, that was, you know, we, it's where everyone ended up. I mean, if they weren't at his place. <laughs> 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 they were round to ours. And there must um, be lots of perks of living in Hollywood, I imagine. But one of the downsides, I think, of maybe doing that is if you're dating people in Hollywood, that when you stop seeing them, you don't stop seeing them. Like, they're still no, on magazine get, covers and... Does that happen to you? Yes. It's awful. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> it was funny. It does sound awful. There was an occasion where I was driving down Sunset Boulevard and my sister looked up and she went, Oh my god, you shagged that whole billboard. Why did it two big relationships over ten years? Oh dear. So listen, Mark Wahlberg, congratulations on Contraband. Thank you. Because uh, it's already been a big hit in the States, and it's opening here. Sexy the March. What am I doing here already then? Well, because uh, oh you god. came back from Australia very early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean, like, you're traveling in the wrong direction, my gosh. Um, now, it's a, a big thriller, like I was saying in the monologue, it's all about smuggling. Uh, do you want to give us a, a, a hint of the story, a whiff of the story? If I have to. Yes, go on. <laughs> you, you don't have to, but... Uh, uh, no, I've just have been talking about it a lot, uh, and I'm <laughs> pretty tired of talking about it, but it, yeah, it's just, actually a remake. Just going through these questions, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, uh, a you remake. may be talking about it a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds amazing, it does sound amazing. <laughs> it's a remake of an Icelandic yeah. film. Uh, we saw the original and I obtained the rights. Uh, it's about a guy who was a, a world-class smuggler and he has, very much like myself, he go goes to have a family and children and he decides he's going to turn his life around and do the right thing. And then he's got a brother-in-law who's not very smart and he tries to smuggle something for some very dangerous people. Customs boards the boat, slash I have to go to Panama to try to smuggle something to save his ass. And when you were filming, obviously you filmed in New Orleans, but then you filmed in Panama, uh -huh. where it seems quite kind of lawless. Was that quite dangerous? You know what? It was, we got off the plane and we just basically, we were free to do whatever we want. We had machine guns and riding around the streets when nobody ever kind of regulated what we were doing. But no policeman ever came up and said, why are you having a major gunfight? <laughs> one, one guy asked me if I was somebody else and I said no and that was, that was pretty much it. What, like, you know, his mate who killed his brother? No, he thought I was, he thought I was a guy from some other show. <laughs> so I just said no. Then I tried to convince him that I was Johnny Depp, but he didn't. Know. <laughs> but listen, Contraband, we've got a clip of Contraband. Uh, this is you and Giovanni Ribisi having one of your, your many confrontations. It's kind of earlier in the film. With Giovanni Ribisi? Yeah. Have you ever worked with him? No, but I know him. He's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's such a sweet guy. And then when he plays this larger-than-life villain, it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable to see him go in and out of character like that. Yeah, he's really scary. He's properly scary in the film. Here we go. Mm. Good fight. He, uh, he's, a, he's a method actor. But he doesn't like to go method when he's getting his ass kicked. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I had to, uh, you know, crank up the volume on him a little bit. Because you do really enjoy those fights. When I'm the one beat person, yes, I don't like getting beat up. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Do you find, because it, 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 it must be odd for you now, because you're kind of accepting, the, as you said, you know, you're a man, you're a dad, you're getting older. Because wasn't there a confusion with a, a script recently? Oh, my God. I got a call from my agent saying that Paramount has this movie that they want me to do. A young guy and an older guy, so I'm thinking, shit, I, I just had uh, played golf with Jack Nicholson. I'm like, I'll ask Jack to play the part. And then I was like, well, maybe if Jack doesn't do it, you know, you get, you know, Gene Hackman hasn't worked in a while. So I'm thinking of all these great guys that I can do this movie with. And then they call me and they say, what do you think about Garrett Hedlund? And I said, for what? Oh, God. And he said, for the young guy. I said, what the f*** am I going to do? <laughs> and literally, I was, and I just started laughing to myself. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I appreciate the fact that I even made it. Because there was, you know, there was some, uh, some dodgy years there when I was younger. <laughs> so to have made it to 40 was an accomplishment. But I, I didn't quite expect that.